Okay, let's break down the HBO card. Dawson, Stevenson, Gamble, and Perez. And let's start with Gamble and Perez because that was the way the order of the fights came out. And there's nothing really to talk about. Your risk is Gamboa will not take the risk. You know, he just won't make it an exciting fight anymore. Now, is it because the supplements ain't in the system no more? Uh-oh. But he's not the ferocious Eurisius Gamboa that we're used to seeing. Because, one, he was fighting at lighter weights. And dominant, breezing through these guys. Now he's fighting guys that are just as big as he is and they're able to take his punch. And they can they have better skill. They see everything he got coming. He's not as explosive as he used to be. His punches are not that clean. And they're not as quick as they used to be. Now, how much of that was the supplements? And how much of that is Gamboa? I mean, Perez saw everything that he was doing. Was able to take all the punches that Gamboa was throwing. And was able to dish his own. And we saw the body shots. And we saw the counter left hooks. We saw Gamboa slow down. In the later parts of the fight, and they saw they call it getting bored. I call it him slowing down and not doing enough. He's a he's a six round fighter who's been glorified, and I just don't think he's ever going to get to the level where the majority of the people think he's going to belong and fall into. He's not going to make it. Not at this level, fighting world class competition. And at that weight class, who could he beat? I mean, truly beat, and that you still want to see. Is he a superstar? No. He's not a superstar, not anymore. He was a superstar back then, but that's when he was being marketed as the mini Mike Tyson. Now, is he the mini Mike Tyson? Does he look like the mini Mike Tyson? I mean, his problems are things are moving very slowly. He's not 100% happy with the way 50 Cent is running his career at all, but he has no choice. You know, he made this bed, so now he's got to lie in it. So, it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation for him because his career is not in his own hands. But what you going to do? He wins an unimpressive decision, and now what? Is he back on the shelf? All right, let's go to the main event. Chad Dawson, Adonis Stevenson, um, assessing the fight. Dawson made a couple of key mistakes in this fight. And I respect Chad Dawson because a lot of people hate on him, but this guy has fought everybody. I mean, this guy would go to your backyard and fight you. He has no problem trying to make the fights happen that the people want to see. And because of the people's hate on him, talking about how boring he is, he has actually been the guy coming forward, bringing a fight to people, and he's really a counterpuncher. So, I give this guy a lot of credit, and I respect him a lot. He never looks for an easy fight, he looks for the best fights, and that's why I respect Chad Dawson. And let's move forward to the fight. Now, this guy, Chad Dawson, does have a lot of trust issues. Uh, he suffers from a lot of anxiety issues and everything else. And that might have played a part in tonight's fight, but I doubt it. I won't take that away from Stevenson. I blame Dawson for making the mistake. In the fight, Chad Dawson, instead of establishing his jab, which is very important against a guy who's coming to land basically one punch to knock you out, and if you the better boxer, show it, prove it. Throw that stick out there. Keep the guy at bay. Use your height early. This guy, we don't know what he's going to look like after six rounds. Try to get in three, four rounds to use his legs. Gas him out. Use that jab. Keep that stick in his face. Because he's going to be throwing a lot of punches. Let him miss. Let him swing. Let him get tired. Go to that body. Break him down with your boxing skills. But Chad Dawson came in here to prove a point to people. He wanted to come in here and knock out Stevenson, and he tried to counter him. He came in letting Stevenson get really close to him while he was trying to counter him with his right hand. And you don't need to do that this early in the fight. 
He came out a little too aggressive, a little too pumped. I don't know if it was the weigh-in or whatever, but he came in a little too pumped and made a very key mistake. Adonis Stevenson is a power puncher, and his left hand is the home run ball. You got too close, and you smothered your own shot trying to counter with a right hand. He was ready to counter with a right hook, so he never saw the left coming, and the rest is history. You know, and of course Chad, being the guy he is, he looks for an excuse to get out of everything when it's all said and done. You know, we know that Chad, the fight with Andre Ward, it did kill him. You can tell the guy was drained and that his legs weren't there. But when you go back up and wait, the damage is already done. You know, now you're going to be the chinny guy who has no legs. Legs go when he gets shot. Uh, if he goes back in here, one of these guys again that could punch, I mean, what's going to happen to him? It's going to go right back down. He made very key mistakes. Um, I just give Stevenson a lot of credit. He did what he was supposed to do. He applied the pressure early to get close, and it worked. He got close, landed the money ball, and he won. So we'll see what happens down the line. And I'm out. Popcorn.